What was the key factor in your decision to choose academia as a career? Also, any memorable experiences as a professor you would like to share? I had not decided to come to academia in that sense. You know, uh, my interest was in research. I wanted to go to research, and I went to research. So after I did my M Tech from IIT Kanpur, uh, there was an opportunity to go to Bangalore, and there they wanted to get somebody who can build antenna arrays for doing radio astronomy. It so happened that I just went to Raman Research Institute, and they were building their last telescope. So I went and I saw the facility, and I was very fascinated. So my mind was always towards research, so I decided to go there and start doing research. My wife said that no, you can be a good teacher. You know, so it so happened, and, and that time, believe me, but I was very scared of facing people. But then my wife was probably more confident. So when I was in US uh, for my, doing my postdoctoral fellowship, the advertisement for IIT Bombay came, and she applied on my behalf. That uh, you know, there's an advertisement, so why didn't you apply there? And I said no, but I may not be interested. She said no, 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 try. And it so happened, you know, that I was I was selected in IIT Bombay. But after joining IIT Bombay, then I realized that well, teaching has its own fun. That's how I got into academics. Throughout your stay here, you held the offices of the HOD of Electrical Engineering Department, Dean of Resource Mobilization, as well as Dean of Student Affairs here at IIT Bombay. Do you think that the administration work that you were allotted in any way hampered your academic or research work? How did you manage to maintain a balance? Actually, it did not affect my academics, but it certainly affected the research work. You know, because when you get into the administration, there are some uh, work which have to be attended on priority basis. Especially when I was dean of student affairs, every day used to be something which was a immediate problem. You, know, you have to solve that problem right now. So yes, the, the research got a little backseat, but uh, I must say that. I made sure that I did not stop research, you know, till I really went to uh, University of Pune or IIT Delhi. Then I did not have much time to do research. But even when I was in administration in IIT Bombay, I found time to do research. Of course, when you do all this, your personal life actually gets affected. So you don't have much time to give to your family and all that. So it did happen. So I wouldn't say that uh, research or teaching was seriously affected. Little bit affected. Right, but then of course, doing administration is a contribution to your institute. You know, so I thought that way that when you are part of a system, you should do whatever system needs. And if system needs you to do something for the system, research all said and done is still you know for individual gains, you know, directly. So I said I really had a compromise between these two. But overall, I'm quite happy. I'm satisfied. Students admitted in IITs are increasing year by year, but signs of actual learning are slim. What are your views and experiences regarding this? So one thing which is uh, I'm seeing in the class is, uh, and this may be my personal opinion, I see now a bimodal distribution in the class. You know, earlier distribution used to be wherever the mean is, but it used to be more like a homogeneous Gaussian kind of distribution. But now I see there are some group which is extremely brilliant, but there is some group which doesn't seem to be really coming close to this group, right? So, and this I can blame to the to the selection process. To, in my opinion, that is one. Second thing, what is happening is that students are going away from the core engineering thing because there are many better lucrative opportunities outside the engineering, right? So earlier, for example, large number of students used to go for higher studies. That number is substantially reduced now. So what that means is that the academic focus which students used to have that has changed over the years. Technology base which we wanted to sort of strengthen. That somewhere we are getting uh, becoming weak because our bright students are not going towards technology. You know, they are going to other branches, right? So the, I wouldn't say overall intellectual level of the student is reduced or something. It is not like that. I see still the equally brilliant students at least in my class. Whatever kind of question I used to get 20 years back, I get similar level questions even today in the class. Distribution may be a little skewed here and there. But otherwise, overall, I don't think some things are deteriorated or anything. That is not true. Who do you draw your inspiration from as a teacher? How the subject will be presented, which will appeal to the people, without compromising quality, how the concept should be developed. That I learned from uh, many many people. So, to name to start with, 
first is Feynman, right? I heard Feynman's lecture, which was a TV lecture, right? But that lecture inspired me so much. And I learned that the way something should be taught to excite people, that is the way it should be done. So I, I don't know anywhere close to him, but yes, that's one of the sort of model, inspiration model. Second thing is that when I was at Raman Institute, it so happened that uh, S. Chandrasekhar, the Nobel laureate, he came to Raman Institute, he was visiting. Okay. And that time I was a young engineer, he just joined there. He was giving a talk, uh, Chandrasekhar, in Raman Institute, uh, which was on mathematical models of black hole. Dr. Chandrasekhar gave a talk for one hour on mathematical models of black hole without writing a single equation. And by the time the lecture was finished, you could see the black hole through and through, just by dealing with the physical concept. That was something which was very, very amazing, you know, very exciting. That a person, and that shows the person's understanding, right? That when your concepts are very, very strong, you don't require too much support of mathematical equations. Mathematical equations give you a quantitative answer, but your concept can give you, even without this equation, the full understanding of the phenomena. So he is another one, you know, with a model, role model for me. So like that, there are many people who came. Was there any original ambition that you wished to pursue but couldn't take up? I could have done better again in research. No, I, uh, I still did not achieve that what I wanted to achieve in, in research. So maybe at national level, I'm quite known, but international level, I could have done better. And that again, if I had continued in US uh, uh, in, in astronomy, uh, probably it, it would have given me much more, uh, as a scientist, a visibility and achievement, which could have been much more. So that is little, uh, you know, I would not say frustration, but uh, uh, something which sort of remains, you know, that uh, if I had done full-time research, maybe I would have done something uh, better. You know, but otherwise I don't have regrets. You know, I'm quite happy what I did. What do you think about grade inflation across years in the courses you teach? Also, your opinion on the correlation between grades and proficiency in a course. So many times you see that there are students who are very good in understanding, okay, but they are not very good in giving exams. You know, I've seen some people there. So many times you may come across somebody, you know, that whose grade do not reflect uh, on his understanding. You know, he's much better actually in the subject, okay, uh, though his grades are actually lower there, you know. So, but these cases are very rare cases, you know. By and large, if you have done a systematic study, uh, your understanding does get reflected into the grade, right. So I wouldn't say there is too much of decorrelation, but once in a while there are cases where understanding is better, much better than what the grades are telling you, you know, in the, in the courses. Other way around, I, I, I don't think it's true. Based on your stay and involvement with both IIT Delhi and IIT Bombay, do you feel any significant differences in the way things work at these institutes? Okay, so first of all, IIT Bombay, I spent my life. So I belong to IIT Bombay. You know, I know IIT Bombay in and out, you know, because I have seen uh, student side also, I have seen faculty side also, I have seen administration, other things also, fundraising also. So uh, IIT Bombay, I know in and out, you know, so anything you talk about IIT Bombay, I know it. IIT Delhi, my stay was a little short, you know, it was only four years and that too, you are at the apex level. So uh, joining something at the apex level and coming from grassroots is a different thing. But the culturally, I would say the difference is that uh, uh, city, whatever cultural city differences between Bombay and Delhi, that same difference you will see in the institute also, right? So IIT Delhi being too close to power, things are, they revolve around power, right? Everybody wants to have something uh, for power. So academically, uh, there is not substantial difference, but if you talk about other people who are involved into, into the thing, yes, their style of functioning will be a little more power centric. Whereas in Bombay, that power centric nature uh, is not really there. But if you look at the students and the research and the faculty, I think they are very comparable. 
is not very different what does an average day of a professor at iit bombay look like yeah so so first of all i i get up fairly early in the morning i get up around 5:30 okay and uh, my first thing is to go for a walk so i walk about for about 45 minutes and then i do 45 minutes yoga so that is taken care then maybe i i can take a breakfast and then and then i play sitar okay so i don't come too early to office i come little late to office so i play sitar after that and then i you know the day whatever goes till the evening which is there evening i do watch tv you know i'm not averse to tv at all uh, night i read so normally after 10 i have a reading uh, thing uh, i sleep by 12 so i sleep for five and a half hours yes but that's what i've been for last uh, 30 years if you were to give one piece of advice to a freshman who just got into an iit what would it be what do you think is a professor's role as mentor to students you know so i would give one advice to the student is you define something for yourself but life doesn't give you exactly the way you want it so whatever comes do with full commitment and whole heart and with full happiness if you do that right you will always find ultimately what you want to do right you will not miss it it may be delayed little bit but you will you will get that thing is you know that when you are here live in the in the present right so when you are doing academics don't worry what will happen 10 years down the line this is the journey which you are doing today enjoy the journey don't keep on thinking about destination destination ultimately you will get but why to lose the fun of enjoying journey right so today what is happening students the students are too focused for only their ultimate jobs or what they are going to get after getting degree but in that process you know the fun of being here is actually lost so enjoy make full use of this uh, you know system iit is a fantastic system it gives you complete freedom it gives you interaction with the peers right it sort of gives you a scope for uh, taking out all your you know capabilities not necessarily engineering even arts you know all the cultural activities your resignation from the position of the director of iit delhi created quite a stir would you like to share with us your experience of that time and past that how do you feel returning back to iit bombay there was some difference of opinion and you know i decided not to you know to continue let me put it this way so let me put it you know very philosophical way in life there are sometimes you come across a situation where you have to choose between your chair and your self pride right i decided to choose my self pride 